Good parenting requires nutritional guidance. Healthy parenting is not easy if your child has behavior problems. The youth who develop personality disorders haven't reached full development based on their current age group. According to psychologists and researchers, several factors cause development problems such as, early childhood and teenage experiences, genetics, the environment you grew up in, and all can play a role. Authors of the Dimensional Assessment of Personality Pathology, Jackson, Livesley, and Schroeder, joined forces with Jang in 1993 to study whether 18 of the personality dimensions were heritable. They found that 40 to 60 percent of the recurrence of certain personality traits across generations can be explained by heredity, anxiousness, callousness, cognitive distortion, compulsivity, identity problems, oppositionality, rejection, restricted expression, social avoidance, stimulus seeking, and suspiciousness. Each one of these qualities is associated with a personality disorder. The study supports the hypothesis that personality disorders are hereditary. Those earlier issues usually don't get addressed, and later show up as a teen or an adult. Through anxiety, depression, alcohol, and drug usage, eating disorders, and other development problem areas. If you ask a nutritionist, they probably will say development problems are too the result of poor nutritional habits. But, you can't blame everything on the government system. In an infant's vitamin B12 deficiency is due to an inborn error of absorption, metabolism, or nutritional problems. Vitamin E is used for treating individuals with certain genetic disorders, commonly found in very low-weight premature infants. Some youth are born with no dreams or hope and are on a fast track to sinful acts. Do you think gang members or prostitutes would commit crimes if their eyes were healthy? Nothing would ever stop them from living their dreams and goals. When they grow up, go to church to hear the pastor say be reborn again. As if having accepted salvation and spiritual transformation and prayer wasn't enough. Since fewer people have experienced a renewed soul emerging through prayer and words of the Bible, very few have put on the renewed flesh. The youth generally look at themselves thinking I am not old now. Why be reborn again? The flesh, mind, and soul need renewed continuously. Foods high in nutrition help youth develop healthy behavior patterns naturally with structural guidance. Also, natural foods help youth reach full development, think rapidly, and control their emotions. This does enable them to become smarter and wiser, to live out their full potential. Embracing healthy behavior patterns promotes achievements, cheerfulness, cooperation, goal setting, kindness, honesty, motivation, self-control, and self-endurance. Raising a happy, healthy child is one of the most challenging jobs a parent can have, and one of the most rewarding. So, avoid mealtime battles and encourage physical fitness, the overall goal is to avert all child behavior problems and obesity. Parents with children that have been abused cannot use the same parenting techniques your parents used, whether you believe they were effective parenting skills or not. But parenting with love and logic requires discipline on either side. Healthier eating habits help put the fun back into parenting. Below has been translated. Jesus Christ was a descendant of David, and both inherited some of the same types of characters. Jesus was portrayed as the Son of God and Nehemiah 12.36 portrays David as the Man of God. 1 Samuel 16.11-23 says, None of the sons in David's generation were as beautiful and godly as he was, so the Lord told Samuel and Jesse, David's father to rise and anoint him, he's the one. David walked with a sheep, so Saul sent for him. When the evil spirits surrounded Saul, David would play the harp and the evil spirits would depart from him. In 1732-38, David said to Saul, By me being the servant, I will go and fight with the Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against the Philistine to fight because you are a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. David said to Saul when I the servant had my father's sheep, a lion, and a bear came after I took the lamb out of the flock. Then I had to go after the lion, to deliver the lamb out of the mouth of the lion, it rose against me, I caught it by the beard, then smote, and slew it. I the servant slew both the lion and the bear, therefore, the uncircumcised Philistine will be done the same way as I have done them since he has defeated the armies of the living God. Furthermore, the Lord that delivered me from the paws of the lion, and the paws of the bear, will also deliver me from the hands of the Philistine. Saul said to David, You can go, the Lord will be with you. Saul armed David with a moor and a helmet of brass, and then he armed him with a coat of mail. Child of God's 101 Reality Back in the day when a child was born, they were naturally born into the family's inheritance. According to what Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Mark 10:15. They are to seek the inheritance, kingdom, through faith, believing in Jesus through salvation, and the words of the Bible. However nowadays receiving an inheritance is very rare for most youth from the father or mother. Initially, once the child enters the world it is up to the parent or parents to raise them as angelic and godly people. Teaching youth to receive the entire kingdom of God during the early stages will help advance child development. 
their innocence and obedience rely heavily on these responses, to avoid becoming a gang member or prostitute. Also, to receive the inheritance sooner or later rather than not at all. But many parents think they need alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, excessive material stuff, narcotics, morphine, etc., over their child or children's full development. And too many fathers and mothers are willing to let their kids fail to pursue romance. Unfortunately, inordinate relationships and substances are a substitute for the parents' happiness. As a result of some parents' lack of doing what's right for their children, they too feel the downfall in health. Meanwhile, the youth suffer and this has been proven to have a lasting effect on their mental health. I have been there on either side and endured the sufferings, and believe me it gets real. How can you ask them to stand for obedience, if you fail at picking yourself up when making slip UPS in the faith of God? Fortunately, you do not need alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, excessive material stuff, narcotics, morphine, etc. It isn't enough to be present some of the time, but it is enough to want to see your child achieve success. If you haven't given the child lacking RDA values of natural foods, the benefit of the doubt of receiving them. The child isn't to be classified as a devil, homosexual, or any other harsh name. Furthermore, no one ought to stereotype them into a category to be lured by their enemies. Since the RDA helps children and parents advance in development to respond better to knowledge, when you can't afford natural foods, you buy vitamins. Spend less on wasteful things, you will need that money to better the family's health. It is about spending money wisely to buy and prepare healthier foods. We all have heard this time and time again. It is time for parents to fight addictions and take a stand to control the family's health. It's easy to think someone else or some object controls your self-worth. Overcoming spending habits isn't easy, but building self-confidence will prove you have the power to control your self-worth. Jesus asked, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Matthew 7:11. Teens and Violence The world is full of harassment, and whatever popular social networks are available harassing takes place. Users trolled social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or Twitter. Statistics showed 14% of middle and high school students in the U.S. admitted to cyberbullying. Cyberbullying has been a national topic for the past decade, as of 2015, 34% of middle and high school students in the U.S. had been cyberbullied. Cyberbullying as of 2016, all 50 states had passed bullying laws, but only 23 included cyberbullying. Bullying cops and pig-headed people bully increasing awareness of control over victims. Bullying is used with force, threat, coercion, or intimidates to dominate others. When bullying is done in groups it's called mobbing. The people who normally get bullied are gays or have unlikable body parts or major health issues. Overly aggressive and permissive parents are likely to have children who bully. Bullies and victims are at a higher risk for depression and hyperactive disorders. Researchers say fighting back shouldn't be encouraged instead the victim should be encouraged to walk away. Bullies are likely to engage in vandalism, shoplifting, truancy, and substance abuse more than students who don't bully. There is a direct correlation between drug distribution and gun violence with bullying behavior. And there are five types of bullying behaviors, cyber, attacking, deceit, exposure, hacking, hate speech, manipulation or threatening, emotional, include relational, physical, choking, hitting, kicking, manipulation or punching, social, include rumors, and verbal, deceit, hate speech, manipulation, taunting, teasing or threatening. Bullying can occur where there is an imbalance of power from inside the home to a universal level. Denying or ignoring bullies reinforces to them they can bully without consequence. In a culture fascinated with greed, influence, power, and violence high rates of domestic violence mean many kids and teens grow up accepting violence as acceptable behavior. An alternative way to get what one wants. According to civil, criminal, disability, and harassment laws bullying can become a crime. If a school district doesn't take appropriate steps to stop a child from being bullied, the district may be violating local, state, and federal laws. For information parents can contact the local U.S. Department of Education office. This type of behavior shows God, the person who became a bully was disobedient toward a parent or person of authority. Bullying behavior is not acceptable by any means, and the behavior will need to be reproved towards God. Swear terms research showed in 2014 language learning occurs at home including profanity. Ordinarily, by the time kids start attending school, they are knowledgeable of bad word usage. Either they learn swear terms from family or the media. This discussion is about the oh my god swear term of use. Word expressions use the word swear in them. Term of use, I swear oh my god. However, oh my god itself is not the swear term of use. It's when you add swear in the context. Term of use, oh my god, I swear. Again oh my god itself is not the swear term of use. It's when you add swear in the context. 
term of use, I swear on earth I will blah, blah. The word swear is used with the earth. You must not use the word swear within the context of God, earth, nor heaven. Often you may get the understandings twisted. If you just said, oh my God you must leave room to give God glory of all things. This term of use isn't the wrong term of use. And he that shall swear by heaven, seer by the throne of God, and by him, that sits thereon. The throne is earth. The words I swear are used in court to be sworn in. It seems when used in the court of law, it's most prevalent to use. Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Matthew 5 34 35. Living sacrifices this is a part of healing the nations, and becoming the first fruit of others that are dead in Christ. Sin can control the body through actions with your feet, hands, mind, and mouth. Rather than offering the body for a sinful sacrifice, you are to control it as a living sacrifice for doing God's will. 1. Ears and eyes use the ears and eyes to give and receive impressions. Discipline yourself to critique what you see and hear, applying biblical truths to the world's ideas. 2. Feet and hands use the feet and hands to perform righteous good works, to be self-supporting to not rely upon others. Also, to give to others in their times of need. 3. Mind, use the mind to build good character, go to church, pray daily, and spend time studying the Bible. 4. Tongue, use the tongue to give praise, recite scripture, rejoice, and serve God, and witness Jesus Christ's experiences. All of which is to be surrendered to God. Obedience There is a difference between needs and wants. Either can be desired, but obeying and trusting are necessary to make proper decisions. The youth cannot comprehend obedience if they visualize it as a weakness, and the youth won't know who to trust if they aren't trustworthy. But, if the youth are around an untrustworthy person, they naturally know not to trust that person. It is the excessive negativity that makes the youth know not to put forth trust. When excessiveness becomes a forceful show, it is consistent with a habit, which is a form of disobedience. Excessiveness formalizes during the early stages of life, you can see this when newborns cry profusely. Once the newborn's needs are met, they generally stop crying. Because they don't know what need or want means. Which makes it easy to determine when the youth's desires are workable. A servant of God must acknowledge obedience as strength to receive blessings, honor, and rewards. Proverbs 3,5-6, Jeremiah 10,23-24 Taking a stand against crime during forceful show adults and bullies often encourages rebellion which may involve assaults, burglary, robbery, stealing, theft, vandalism, all of which are forms of disobedient behavior. It teaches kids and teens they can get something for nothing rather than earning it. This tough love they experience is a misguided love anyone can face when it is time to take a stand against crime. Most people don't believe crime for kids start at ages 5 to 10 and teens 11 to 14. Yeah, there are no age gaps. Standing against crime means you stand steadfast for biblical knowledge. It means you acknowledge there will be spiritual love, even in the form of trials and tribulations. Great trials and tribulations are formed to learn from the choices you make. Just as adults shouldn't encourage rebellion kids and teens shouldn't either. God doesn't want us to hinder the dreams and goals of others. Victims for sinful sacrifices parents who were raised with biblical knowledge, no raising their youth with biblical knowledge can be beneficial. Those parents' greatest intent is to guide their youth righteously, and may not be acceptable of disrespectable behavior. But, parents who were raised without biblical knowledge, tend to think of raising their kids without it. Those parents' greatest intent is to guide their youth unrighteously, and tend to curse and fight in front of them. Either way, a child can still become a victim of sinful sacrifices. When parents teach them that disobedience is used to get what one wants. This teaches them to commit sinful sacrifices with false discernment for God. Whether having had biblical knowledge or not, some kids can still discern right and wrong, if you allow them. However, when kids and teens are taught to fight and curse adults, the result often leads to a loss in housing or financial support. Victims of sinful sacrifices Some parents are too self-centered to know when their youth is concerned about disrespectable adults taking advantage of them, so, not all parents are supportive as they can be. Supportive parents, guide their youth to save themselves for a supportive mate. Parents who aren't supportive, hinder their youth, teaching them sex is how to acquire success rather than earning it. After that, they don't acknowledge waiting for the supportive mate, and they cannot comprehend what having supportive relationships or being supportive means. Often they too become self-centered surrounded by their parents' propaganda, with angry emotions getting the best of them. Which can lead to accepting bribes and kickbacks, without a sense of righteousness for true discernment. Not having proper guidance growing up, kids and teens can fall victim to circumstances in the form of abuse, alcohol, crime, drugs, gambling, money, prostitution, sex, and unhealthy eating. The youth don't need to be rewarded for something they are to take a stand for. They know right from wrong. This kind of sinful sacrifice hurts deeper. All too often parents' responses are, 
the same thing has happened to me when I was a youth, and no one did anything either. But you can't break the cycle of abuse unless you are open to change. To kids and teens who fall victim to sex, flee from the enemy that is trying to misguide you in the wrong direction. Flee as many times as needed and find a supportive adult, and remain. Otherwise, if you cannot find a supportive adult, flee to your local authorities. Disciplining for God's glory. A child can become easily anxious, emotionally impulsive, or cause suspicion if they aren't actively exercising the body, mind, and soul in the great outdoors. Youth who have behavior problems usually are inactive, exercising isn't one of their greatest assets. For advanced cognitive development and functioning one must be concerned, how their actions and processes, affect their perception of memory, judgment, and reasoning. Rather than with one's emotional and volitional processes to rule out most personality disorders. Getting youth involved in activities and exercise can help to develop flexible rules they will want to follow. Overall improving their behavior conduct abroad, home, and school. Although most parents do have a very busy schedule, it is wise to set aside quality time for the kids. Once you have them taking responsibility for their effect and perceptions, then you can program the flexible rules for home and school. Teach them to have faith in God at an early age, and to believe they are heirs to a divine promise that he has in store for them. This is so they don't lose sight of the divine appointments. Tell them the discipline they will receive is for the glory of God, not for man. And the discipline is to encourage a better quality of life through the kingdom of God. God would want them to know he has their back as well as their parents. They need to acknowledge why he wouldn't want them doing those things, and why it is so important for them to see it from his perspective. And why he intends for them to build a life of living sacrifices for when they do grow up and move out on their own. And why seeking sinful sacrifices will make them want to give up on life altogether. When an inheritance is prevalent waiting for them today, all they need to do is seek it through the heavenly spirit of Jesus. This is how you start building a fruitful, loving and kind, spirit around youth today. Youth letting go of anxiety when you feel anger and fear deal with emotions responsibly. Seeking revenge isn't something God would expect you to do. Don't hinder others with excessive thoughts. Find unique ways to freely express your emotions, venting isn't the most favorable option. Remember respect, obey and there will always be consequences to the choices you make. Try to bring your inner self out conservatively in gatherings and other forms of communication. Research topics you know will come up to avoid over-communicating. Thinking smart gets huge returns in life, and thinking with Bible logic gets rewards. All of this will enable you to live longer. And obviously, your parents dealt with anxiety and setbacks that normally caused frustrations. Using inner strength control the things you can control, and let go of the things you cannot. This will enable you to stay committed to important appointments and events. Just acknowledge to stop struggling, to strive for excellence. Leave room for error with the traumatic events, and remember something righteous can still come from the events. There is a higher righteous purpose to be reached for most painful outcomes. Foo for focus. Foo is forgiveness, obedience, and understanding. You seek values from the trinities, Father, Son, and Holy Spirits, perspective to get focused. The inspired knowledge of the Bible includes gifts and vows of faith with God and others of which have higher values that enable unlimited focus. Gifts from God come as a promise that involves inheriting eternal life on earth which is the kingdom. Since we were cursed when Eve ate the forbidden fruit, we all are called to be a servant of God. And the higher values that God intends for you to live by include the Ten Commandments. There is a thin line between living hell on earth, and heaven in eternity on earth when you are feeling a sense of entitlement. When you break a commandment, don't lose your focus. This is so your body, mind, and soul can remain blameless for the royal coming of a new living God. Going through life without acknowledging the reasons for obeying the Ten Commandments is arrogant. Arrogance is the chain and ball of life that keeps many people down. Because being focused on another person's wealth relates to the wind, and whichever way the wind blows we tend to follow. Only envisioning wealth through the heavenly spirit of God will get you focused. Just as remaining blameless will get you through eternity, to live heaven on earth. But eternity starts when you live a long enough life to be classified as eternity. Focus is to give your undivided attention towards some action, cause, object, person, place, or thing. And then direct your efforts towards that something. After accepting salvation, we as Christians are to begin each day with God being our central focus, even when we have to find a quiet place to spend with Him. In churches, prayer is considered to be a part of the rituals of their religion. It can help you get in touch with your inner emotions and avoid anger issues. Once you see the signs and wonders of God's power in your life, this is the way you can acknowledge that He does have an individual inheritance in store. Why worry about what tomorrow will bring? when you can pray that God meets your needs. Often people are more concerned about what others may think of them rather than, praying to God to repair the struggles that they face. Be sure of what is more important, a prayer list or worry list. A prayer list. Below has been translated. The story of Cain and Abel in Genesis 4 suggests God curse Cain's land, 
he did not honor him with his first fruits, and Abel his brother did honor God with his first flock of sheep. Well God respected Abel for that, it meant once Abel honored God, he could do what he wanted with the rest of his sheep. Since Cain did not honor God first his land was cursed and everything, he did on his land was cursed. At home teach your youth to honor the father with first fruits to become responsible, or he will curse things you buy or do. It means more than saying a blessing or prayer. If you do honor God with your first fruits, money or anything of value, you get to sign your checks once you become wealthy. If you don't someone else signs your checks for you which could lead to profits not adding up and even worse debt. Because you couldn't be trusted to pay bills on time. Just like we see so many individuals do today. This too is how the curse works. They still need playtime as a youth slack leads to poverty. Slack is the reason for daylight savings time. Effortless behavior a baby must think about the process of standing because there are mistakes and missteps, and a lot of falling occurs. Practice make the new behavior seem familiar, but it takes concentration to achieve. However, concentration requires focus and focus requires effort. Having to repeat challenges mean it will become more familiar, and eventually something that can be performed without effort or thought. Repetition can be the key to the baby's ultimate success. And once the baby masters the process it will become an unconscious task. Having said that, challenges that seem difficult can become familiar with a lot of practice. Youth and Prayer In Mark 10:14, Jesus told his disciples, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. The youth need to be aware that praying to God is like talking to a best friend. They just need to understand the simplicity of prayer. It is asking God for needs to be met, and believing he will do what's best for your interest. Prayer is the basic step when forming a relationship with him. Mainly it shows how to communicate and fellowship with the Father. Children just need to be able to pray at night or throughout the day for forgiveness of sins otherwise, they will become dishonorable with bad word usage. The goal is to make prayer warriors of them. Taking youth to church will help them see the importance of prayer, there you can start guiding your youth to become honorable like Jesus was. Teach them to always be thankful, and explain God answers prayers, but not always in the way you expect him to. Praise God during good and rough times, ask forgiveness of sin if you don't have a request for others. Count blessings and confess sin, name them one by one in secret to God, and hinder not daily prayers. Psalms 146-150 Finger prayers are heart-fill prayers. 1. Confession 2. Forgiveness 3. Praise 4. Self-request 5. Request for others 6. Thankfulness How to tell if youth believe in the heavenly spirit of Jesus. These are things a child has to learn from faithful parents who take time to teach them words of the Bible. A child may be saved before parents can see it, there is evidence that points to a child's salvation. The same learning process can apply to a group of children. Trusting God to be aware. 1. He is good. 2. He loves you, and you ought to love him back. 3. Ten commandments are a good standard, all should obey. 4. He is light, and in him, there is no darkness. Sensing of personal sins. 1. Acknowledge sin is wrong. 2. Awareness of the sin of others. Leaning on God for salvation. 1. Ask forgiveness of sins. 2. Changing your wrong behavior after sinning. 3. Exercise faith in the heavenly spirit of Jesus Christ. 4. Exercise the importance of being with people of the church. 5. Exercise baptism and church membership. Desiring to grow in biblical knowledge. 1. Read the Bible daily. 2. Awareness God saved me. 3. Acknowledge God saved me from guilt and shame of sin. 4. Awareness of the power of prayer. Exercising obedience to God's commands. 1. Repenting of sin. 2. Turn from bad habits and evil ways. 3. Obey His commandments. 4. Honor and obey parents. 5. Turn from material stuff, idols. 6. Rely on the righteous sinner's clear advice rather than, the unrighteous sinner's validation. All of these are evidence of salvation. No child, or adult, does any of these things accurately. Willingness, your parents and teachers taught you more than unworthiness. Things seem entertaining, fun, or interesting. And the things you want to do, but someone tells you it isn't time? Do them. You are worthy. As long as it doesn't lead to sinful sacrifices. Children, church songs. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children, of the world. Jesus died for all the children, all the children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus died for all the children, of the world. Jesus rose for all the children, all the children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black and white, 
they are precious in his sight. Jesus Rose for All the Children, of the World. Written by C. Herbert Wollstone, 1856-1927. The B-I-B-L-E Yes, that's the book for me I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, all the time, let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, all around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, all around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, all the time, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, all the time, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, all the time, let it shine. Written by Harry Dixon Lowe's, 1895-1965. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, serve him, serve him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, serve him, serve him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, love him, love him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, thank him, thank him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, thank him, thank him, all ye little children, God is love. God is love. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love, praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love. Written by Carrie Bonner, 1859-1938. The wise man built his house upon the rock, the wise man built his house upon the rock, the wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rain came tumbling down. Oh, the rain came down, and the floods came up, the rain came down, and the floods came up, the rain came down, and the floods came up, and the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rain came tumbling down. Oh, the rain came down, and the floods came up, the rain came down, and the floods came up, the rain came down, and the floods came up, and the foolish man's house went splat. Clap hands once so, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings will come down. Oh, the blessings come down, as your prayers go up, the blessings come down, as your prayers go up, the blessings come down, as your prayer go up, so build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. End of children's songs. Easter speeches. God sacrifice our Heavenly Father, look down from above on the world you've created, out of words of love Lord, when you spoke precious life into being, you created so perfect each and everything but when we sinned, perfection was lost and separation from you was the price it cost, I know many times throughout the future years, you tried so hard in vain to draw us all near, it took your dear son to pay the ultimate price, when he laid it all down, the most holy sacrifice, the price Jesus paid has brought back to you, the fellowship we had, when we were born anew. Written by M.S. Lowndes. Saving grace Lord, you are so wonderful and deserve our love and praise, I cannot express just how I feel, when I think of your saving grace, to think of what you went through, that day upon the cross and in the moments leading up to it, when soldiers spat and scoffed and beat you with no mercy, making sport, and having fun, you said not a word in your defense even though, you were God's son you bore it all out of your love for the lost and dying souls, to give us a hope we can hold on to for a future yet to unfold, it's such a beautiful description, Lord, of what your grace can do for no one's exempt from your saving grace, but it's a gift freely given from you. Written by M.S. Lowndes. The Lamb of God Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sin, he came the sinless Son of God to cleanse our hearts within, he hung upon the blood-stained cross thinking of you and me, dying like some hardened criminal, his body in agony his blood flowed down from the cross, his body tormented with pain he cried out to his heavenly Father, but it seemed no answer came people stood and jeered at him, mocking to the end who Jesus was and why he came, they couldn't comprehend their hearts. Were indifferent to the Lord, their consciences grew ever cold his mother watched on, unable to bear it, as the sword pierced through her soul, as you try to grasp this picture, the pain that Christ went through, Remember that day you were on his mind, he endured it all for you, just so you could know his love and forgiveness for your sins, to know his resurrection power and to have his life within, he cares that much about your life, he endured the cross for you like those who jeered, or those who loved. With Jesus, what will you do? 
Written by M.S. Lowndes. End of Children Poem Speeches. What makes a supportive parent today? 1. Communication skills. 2. Embracing achievements. 3. Financial certainties. 4. Goal setting. 5. Mental focus. 6. Not giving up. 7. Nutritional guidance. 8. Support all activities. 9. Responsible character. 10. Acknowledgement of all. Equals happy plus joy plus love plus peace.